before we can get started with building anything, we need to understand what tools we need. So let's put our board aside and get started with the soldering iron. This is a soldering iron uh, by a company called Weller WE10. That's the one that I'm using. It's an educational um, uh, kit and it has variable tips, which is an essential thing when you're getting started. You want to get a soldering iron that's maybe not very expensive, but that allows you to replace the tips. This is how I clean my soldering iron, and you'll see it in the other videos. Uh, this is brass wire, but you can also use this technique, which is simply water on a sponge. Now, this is not just a sponge. It's a sponge that can take heat, and you should not just use a regular sponge here. So this is a special sponge for soldering irons. Okay, this is one thing. Now, before I continue, I just want to show you a little trick. It's important to add some solder on your tip. You see how the tip now is, um, like the, the color of it is a bit dull. It is shiny, but not as shiny as I would want it to be. This is going to help me keep it in good shape for a longer time. So every time that I take a break, which is now, I'm going to show you other uh, tools. I'm going to put a blob of solder on it, and then I'm going to put it in and turn it off. This blob of solder helps protect it from oxidizing. Metal gets oxidized, and the way to avoid this is to keep our soldering iron wet with some tin on it at all times. So keep that in mind, because this is what's going to help you avoid burnt soldering tips. Okay, now let's talk about solder. So the solder I have here is from a company called Stanel, and this is a Stanel one millimeter non-leaded solder. This is 500 grams, it's gonna last me for a good bit of time. And it actually is rosin core, which means that it has um, rosin in it, and rosin helps prepare metal surfaces for soldering. This is really important, and we actually have even some solder uh, um, flux that we have separately uh, to make it easier to solder and to have good soldering connections, soldered connections. Um, this has it inside. So when you're ordering solder, make sure that you're buying one millimeter, non-leaded, and rosin core. These are the things you need to look for when you're searching for solder. The next thing to talk about is solder wick, and solder wick is what we use to suck solder out of the board. So for example, if I have uh, here a point where I had a component and I wanted to desolder it and c disconnect it, I used the solder wick to do that. And we're going to show how it's done in another video. We also use soldering pump or a desoldering pump, which you simply press on to suck the solder while it's hot. So these two things are used for desoldering components. Next on the list is these three. This is a pair of pliers or wire cutters, they're also called, uh, from a company called Knipex. This would cost about 20 euros. There are ones that are much more expensive and they're actually worth it, but it really depends how much work you actually do with electronics. So if you're just getting started, you can just get a cheap one and it will last for a really long time. The ones that are more expensive, they are just made of better quality metal and they can cut better. Um, yeah, it's just something to consider. These are um, pliers that we would use to uh, you know, move things around and, and, and hold them. So for example, if I'm now trying to solder this wire here and it's quite small, if I would have something to hold it, it will be easier for me. Although I could do it with my fingers, this is probably going to make it a bit easier for me to work with. Not mandatory, but can be useful. Um, yeah, these are definitely mandatory because you need to cut wires with them or expose wires with them, like, like this. 
So you need to have these for sure. Here I have a Astro AI DT132A, which uh, just rolls off your tongue like uh, Apple MacBook Mini. <laughs> uh, yeah, all these products, they, also, they always have these engineering names, uh, not very intuitive or marketing. Uh, I mean, I guess, never mind, <laughs> not going to talk about marketing here. But um, these devices are used for um, measuring stuff. It's called a multimeter and I can measure all sorts of stuff. For example, I can measure the distance to the owl. No, I cannot measure the distance to the owl with this, but I can measure um, volt. This is DC voltage and I can also measure AC voltage and Hertz and continuity. This is called or uh, also resistance. So for example, if I would want to check now uh, potentiometer, for instance, and I would want to see the value of the potentiometer, I could touch on these pins. We're going to go in detail on this stuff later on. But if I would just touch on these pins here, it gives me the amount of resistance of the potentiometer. Pretty cool. Because if I have now this connected to my board, I can uh, decide how it controls my filter cutoff point, for instance. Now this shows me now OL and OL basically means open line. But if I touch, it actually gives me some number 0 0.1, 0 0.2. This is the amount of resistance between these two uh, terminals. If I press on this here, it now will beep as well while doing it, which makes it easier uh, sort of a signifier to let us know that something is connected or not. So for example, if I would want to now check that I have a connection between this center pin here, and this pin here, I can just touch both, probe them and see that I get a result. While if I would touch here and here, for instance, there's OL open line. I know that there is no connection. This is a really good way for me to troubleshoot my board and figure out if I have a problem in my code or maybe I have a problem in the connection itself. So definitely get yourself one of these uh, multimeters. All right, one last thing before we continue. Um, this is a fume extractor. Fume extractors come with a filter like this filter comes in, but it's actually a fan, it's a simple fan. And the fan um, is backwards. So when we solder, it will basically, uh, it'll basically suck the solder uh, directly through the filter to the other side, and then we get uh, cleaner air. It is highly recommended to be using something like this when you're working uh, for multiple hours uh, soldering. If you're just soldering a quick joint, that's not really a problem. But if you are going to be soldering for a couple of hours, make sure that you have a window open and that you're sucking the air um, away from your face. And this is it. In the next videos, we're going to be looking at the board itself, learning how to connect the components, learning how to wire things to our microcontroller and programming.